Hello all of you Cyber Calculus students. I am Mr. Myring and this video will be introducing some of the basics of combinatorics. I'll be defining it and looking at one of the key principles. Other videos following will include some more work with factorials, permutations, combinations, etc. So uh, this is just be a basic intro to it. You will definitely want to look at all the ones following up as we continue to look at some other videos. So, um, basically, combinatorics is the mathematics of counting objects or groups of objects. Um, understanding the different ways that things can come together is important, and essentially what you're trying to do is answer how many um, ways you can arrange things without actually having to list all of them out because that can obviously become very difficult. You know, so some basic examples could be uh, taking a snapshot into my closet. Uh, you see that uh, there's quite a few options for shirts, ties, pants, and shoes, etc. But uh, how many different ways can I actually put an outfit together and show up for school in the morning? That's one way to work with combinatorics. Another thing would be to think about how you arrange a group of people. Um, you know, in this you know, particular case, if you have a circle of people, that can be different than a straight line of people, and so we have to take that into consideration as to how we actually arrange them and the number of ways you can arrange people. And another one that's a basic example would be if your favorite uh, wing night at your favorite restaurant, you take a look at the menu and try to figure out how many different di meals can you put together if you're going to pick one appetizer, one burger, and one set of wings, or you know, maybe two appetizers and two different sets of wings, something to that effect. And um, combinatorics is the mathematics that allows us to be able to do that without having to list all of them. So the basic principle to that is the multiplication principle. And uh, this kind of is at the heart of the way that we do all the rest of the things, and that is if one event can happen m ways and another independent event can happen n ways, then the two events can happen in a total of m times n ways. And um, independence is a key aspect of this. If you've taken any of your stat stuff, you understand a little bit of, about independence. But it just means that um, choosing one thing does not affect whether or not you choose another. Um, so they, they're equally likely whether you choose um, the first event or the second event, it doesn't really matter. So that's what independence is, and it's a, it's a very key concept. Um, so just a quick example would be if you have a pair of jeans, or four pairs of jeans rather, and you're trying to figure out um, what, how many different combinations if I have six different sweatshirts. So uh, here are my six sweatshirts, you know, my favorite uh, black I Love Mass shirt, and then you have the white I Love Mass shirt, and uh, a nice kind of uh, younger version of the I Love Math sweatshirt. You also have a different I Love Math sweatshirt and uh, another I Love Math sweatshirt. And then my favorite, of course, is I Love Calculus. That's uh, one of my favorite sweatshirts. So if you have four pairs of jeans and six sweatshirts, what is the total number of combinations? How many different combinations could I make to show up to school or to show up uh, out with my friends if I have these things in my closet. Obviously, we're going to assume that they all match so that we don't have to be concerned about um, you know, whether or not I choose a certain sweatshirt. That's what guarantees my independence. So to take a look at this, one of the most basic ways to start a multiplication principle problem where you do have independence is um, just by drawing out a picture. So. For example, once again, we have six sweatshirts and we have four pairs of jeans. How many different combinations can you make? So we need to name all these different sweatshirts. And so if I take a look and say, I'm going to call these sweatshirts, for the lack of anything better, I'm going to call them one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm going to call my pairs of jeans A, B, C, and D. So those are my six sweatshirts. And one of the easiest ways is just to draw a, t a tree diagram where I have six different options. So you make your first branch to have six different options. This is sweatshirt one, two, three, four, five, and six. And if it's equally likely that I pick any of the others uh, from sweat, uh, sweatshirt one, I could choose four different pairs of jeans. That'd be A, 
B, C, and D. And we appre uh, repeat with sweatshirt two, A, B, C, and D. Repeat with sweatshirt three, so on and so forth until you kind of notice a pattern, I hope, where you can definitely just count out how many there are as far as your number of options. And so there is my completed tree diagram. And if I count them out, I have six different branches here. And then I have four different branches stemming off from each of those. And every, every one of those six sweatshirts, I compare with all four of the genes. And so simply the multiplication principle is that if you have independence, you can simply, well, multiply to get your total number of combinations. So 6 times 4 is 24. So how many different combinations can we make? 24 total combinations. It's a very basic start to our combinatorics work, but um, we'll be working more with a factorial. Um, if, what if we have repeated ob objects? Once again, that circular uh, arrangement, permutations, combinations, etc. So those are going to be some of the examples coming up in the following videos.